Yeah, I think one of the major pain points is what I would describe as the data asymmetry. They need a net of data consistency, data standardization, and data symmetry. Uh, we do have some source of standardized data in Hong Kong. For example, the credit bureau data from, for example, commercial credit reference agency, CCLA. But even that, there's still limitations around that. For example, CCLA only cover the SMEs up to a certain scale of business. And they don't include the credit record if the SMEs borrow from non-bank financial institutions. So there's some asymmetric element, even for credit bureau information. And at the same time, there are same old recurrent challenges for SME to organize and prepare financial information documents, which are sufficiently sophisticated and detailed for the banks to conduct credit assessment and make the credit decision. And even if the loans approved, they may have to be assigned with a high risk rating. And banks still have to allocate more capital to, to those loans. And that would increase the capital cost for the banks to conduct any SME business. And there are also other additional costs involved. They need the many work required to conduct activities like KYC, customer due diligence, and ongoing account monitoring process. So those are the major pain points, in my opinion. Yeah, having been a virtual bank, which have uh, sharpened our strategic focus to support SMEs from day one. We have been trying hard to develop any innovative alternative approach to better serve the SME segment. And eventually we partner with uh, Trailink. Trailink is the largest e-customs declaration uh, service provider, which is now supporting close to 90% of domestic SMEs, which have trade activities in Hong Kong. And actually, through our partnership with Trailink, we took part in the CDI project, and through which we can gain access to the customs declaration data, which is all I would describe as the alternative data. And there are several advantages uh, around those data. First, this data is highly structured, which would enable us to conduct uh, more readily the data analytics with much less labor intervention. And second, the data is hugely comprehensive. There's a huge reservoir of alternative data from Trailink, ranging from, for example, the value of goods, types of goods, trade counterparties, port of origin, destination, trade pattern, volatility, industry, behavior, you name it. And that would also enable us to compare a typical SME with the industry peers as well. And the third advantage is the data is up to date because the SME have to declare to the custom on time, which means that it would allow us to have the real time visibility on the business viability and the financial health of the customer. So with all these advantages, we can first conduct more readily the customer due diligence we can develop an alternative credit model. We can also develop a post-approval portfolio monitoring framework. And in the end, it will also allow us to perform the AML and transaction monitoring. Let me start with some background information first. Based on our previous research with the Hong Kong MA, a white paper titled Alternative Credit Scoring of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises was published in the 2020. This work demonstrates the use of alternative data that can be effectively used to assess the creditworthiness of SMEs using machine learning. These data may include cash flow, point-of-sale transaction records, utility bill payments, and even information from online accounting software programs. However, we need to tackle the issues of data privacy before we can make use of these credit insights from these data sources. Therefore, privacy-preserving technologies such as federated learning can potentially solve this problem. And due to data privacy regulations, 
alternative data from different data sources cannot be gathered at a single data point for machine learning. Federated learning aims to enable machine learning using distributed data sets without infringing data privacy. The basic machine learning model of the bank based on its data such as its own cash in and cash out transaction may not be strong enough. But the predictive power of the machine learning model can be strengthened by combining the SME data parameters of other data partners. Alternative credit scoring models can therefore be developed by combining the credit insights generated by data partners using federated learning. A SME business owner can then apply for bank loans online and the credit assessment can be done through combining the scores obtained from various data partners with the consent of the owner. The combined score represents the overall business profile of the SME based on the footprints of the SME recorded at various service providers. The process is fast and simple for both the bank and the loan applicants. With the CDI platform and federated learning, banks are now empowered to use machine learning for alternative credit scoring. The banks can first develop alternative credit models using federated learning as just mentioned. The CDI platform allows alternative data such as the partial score to be shared between banks and data partners based on the consent of the SMEs. The banks can use the consented data to compute the final score using the credit models and decide whether issuing the specific loan or not. I think in our actual experience, CDI does provide a multiple benefits. First, it has substantially enhanced the customer experience. For example, right now, you know, the average time for SME to open an account for us is one working day because we have built a highly automated end-to-end -end process. And the average time for a loan applications to be approved and to have the loan disbursement happened, normally it takes four working days. Second, I think it does promote the financial inclusion as strongly advocated by the local regulator. I can give you some you know, perspective. Amongst the, all the approved applications in our experience, 26% of the loan applicants, they could not obtain any banking loan before. And even for the remaining 74%, even they could get some form of bank credit. They could only get the support by providing the collateral. These two factors combine together, which means close to 80% of our customers, they could not get any unsecured bank credit before. And this is where exactly we are trying to chip in and build the bridge. Because our SME credit over is free of collateral. And lastly, of course, you know, we have you know, approved at least 5% of our SME loans for the startup companies in Hong Kong. And lastly, apart from providing all these benefits to the external world, to the SME you know, customers, it also helps us to more effectively monitor our risk. I can give you one example. As at the end of the last year, we only have five overdue incidents in our lending book. And all of them, the overdue period are extremely short line within seven days. And four out of these five names, they have eventually fully ratified the overdue outstanding in the next month. So I think the multiple benefits cover both the customers as well as the bank. The prerequisites of adopting alternative data and federated learning technology for credit risk assessment include the bank's business team should first identify the target industry sector of the SME to focus on. The credit models of specific sectors such as FMB or logistics can be the targets for design and implementation. 
they should then develop strategic partnerships and negotiate on business models with these data partners. Bank internally needs to establish an end-to-end -end flow of alternate credit assessment. They may choose to onboard to the Hong Kong MA's CDI platform that will allow the bank to get connected to a critical communication infrastructure for receiving consent-based alternative data from data partners. It should train up in-house technical teams or engage technical service providers to develop the federated learning system. The bank should perform iteration of machine model training and test out the system with data partners. Eventually, the federated learning system can then be deployed at the bank site and also the data partner site. To build up an ecosystem for using alternative data and privacy-preserving technologies, the ecosystem should include obviously the banks and the data partners. And data partners can be both from the private and the government sectors. Credit Bureau can also help to provide traditional credit data and regulators such as the Hong Kong MA and the PCPD can closely monitor the progress of the developments. Research institutions such as ASTRI and universities can help on advanced research development in this area. Other service providers such as consultancy and fintech firms and even analytics providers can help to enrich the credit scoring services. I would like to specifically mention the roles of ASTRI in this ecosystem. As we pioneer in developing of these technologies and applications to the stakeholders in Hong Kong, we also demonstrate successful use cases in the SME credit assessment. And we are keen to promote the development of standards, guidelines, and best practices for the industry to adopt these technologies. And we also would like to act as a bridge or coordinator between the industry service provider and research organizations to facilitate the technology adoption. We hope all industry partners will work hand in hand to provide a more efficient yet privacy enhanced credit assessment ecosystem to serve the SMEs in the future. Thank you.